Most people approach learning a constant speed propeller wrong, and it's because they jump straight into the diagrams of the prop governor and looking at, well, how do the exact mechanics of it all work? But I think a better place to start is just zooming out for a second and saying, why? Why do we use a constant speed propeller in the first place? And on a practical level, like how does this actually change how we manage the flight? So in this video, I will show you the why. So that way you don't get lost in the engineering before the concept even clicks. So first, why? Why do we need a more complex way Way to deliver power in the first place? Well, it's kind of like asking why do geared bicycles exist? We all learn on the little fixed gear bicycle that has one gear and one speed. Like it's simple and kids riding it can't really deliver a ton of power anyways. So it's an efficient way to design a simple bike. But stick a 200 pound muscular dude on it and suddenly we're not really getting the most out of that bike anymore. While he's strong enough to pedal up hills or cruise fast, the bike isn't really set up for a wide range of uses like that. So we give the bike some gears, and now we can access a wider range of performance and efficiency. We can go up hills in a low gear, and then when the road is flat, we can change gears and get more bang for our buck and go fast, but efficiently. So now the bike is able to get the most out of that strong dude that's powering it. So in this example, the strong dude is the engine, the bike with just one gear is the fixed pitch propeller plane, and the bike with gears is an airplane with a constant speed propeller. So on fixed pitch propellers, the propeller only has one RPM and airspeed where it's generating its maximum efficiency. So that's why you might hear someone say, oh, it's got a climb prop on it, it's got a cruise prop on it. That prop might be more efficient in climb or it might be more efficient in cruise, but it's not most efficient in both. But put a bigger engine on that plane that's designed to go faster, get better performance, it'd be really nice to be able to actually access that performance for both climb and cruise. Well, enter the constant speed propeller. So with a fixed pitch propeller, the propeller blade angle is fixed, hence the name, and it doesn't change. Remember, it's like a bike with only one gear. But with a constant speed propeller, you can select a maximum RPM setting with the blue knob in the cockpit, and the propeller blade angle is going to change to try to maintain that selected RPM. And while you aren't directly controlling the propeller blade angle with the propeller knob, you can still generally think of it like this. When the prop knob is full forward, the prop is trying to maintain a higher RPM and will therefore take a shallower bite out of the air, so to speak, so that way it can move faster in its rotation. But when you pull the prop knob out, you're selecting a lower max RPM setting. And the blade angle will move to a more coarse pitch, taking more bite out of the air, and it slows down as a result, creating more efficiency. Now this is an overly simplistic explanation, but the point is to realize that you're setting a max RPM with the blue knob, and the governor is trying to accomplish that RPM by making adjustments to the blade angle all throughout the flight, even without you touching the blue knob. So going back to our bicycle analogy, the constant speed propeller is kind of like a mountain bike where you can move into a higher gear and be more efficient. So that's why it exists, but how about how do we actually use it? And now I still don't wanna go into the engineering diagrams of a prop governor just yet. I think it's more practical to understand how do we use it during an average flight. So once you get in the cockpit and you see there are now three knobs to control the engine instead of just two, that's when people start getting nervous, but I promise it doesn't have to be intimidating because it's really important to remember that that throttle and mixture knob, they work exactly like they did back in your Cessna 172 or whatever you're flying with a fixed pitch propeller. We're really just sticking one new knob in the middle to control the propeller. But if we ignore that middle knob for just a minute, it's black in my airplane, usually it's blue in other airplanes, but if we ignore that entirely for a second, it's really good to remember that in a constant speed prop like in my 182, we could still fly it around just like a fixed pitch prop. You just leave the prop full forward and you could fly it around just like your 172. The throttle still works the same. It's still just opening and closing that throttle valve, letting more or less in, uh, air into the engine. And the mixture works the exact same way as well. So those have not changed. They're not any different. But remember, since this 182 has a bigger engine than the 172 does, if we just fly it around like a fixed pitch prop, we're not really getting all that that engine has to offer. So this is where we'd really start to benefit from being able to change the propeller angle to where we can get some more efficiency, specifically uh, during climb and during cruise. So during takeoff, we want that prop full forward to produce maximum thrust, but then during the climb and then eventually cruise, we start to adjust the angle of the propeller to decrease the RPMs, but take more bite out of the air, so to speak, and it also creates a little less drag. It's kind of like switching to a higher gear in a bike once we've climbed that hill and we've reached the flat road and we wanna start cruising efficiently. 
Now I know for some of you that already sounds confusing. It's like, gosh, that's like another thing that I got to manage in flight. And yes, that's true. And that was confusing for me at first too. But but here's the thing. And this is, this I hopefully will simplify things a little bit. If you take the format of an average flight, you have takeoff, climb, cruise, descent, and landing. Just thinking, let's, let's see, landing's at the end. Um, the beginning and end, the takeoff and the landing, you're gonna operate the constant speed prop exactly like you would as a fixed pitch prop. You're probably gonna be land, taking off and landing with the prop full forward, and so all you're worried about is the throttle. So like in those really critical phases of flight, the takeoff and landing, you're not doing anything differently than you would in a Cessna 172. When you have your hands most full, like you're not having to worry about constant speed prop stuff. So it's those middle phases, so you got, uh, you can see it on the screen here, like Charlie, it's it's a climb, <laughs> climb is right here. So during climb and during cruise, that's when you can start to benefit from some efficiency and you're gonna be moving the prop angle just a little bit. During descent, um, you're pretty much just leaving the, the configuration where it was in cruise. Maybe you're pulling the power back just a little bit, but there's not a whole lot you're doing during descent. So it's really just during climb and cruise that this is even a thing at all. And it really doesn't have to be complicated. So I think that like that has helped make it less daunting to me because it's not like you have to forget everything you know about flying a 172 to learn a 182. It's just these few key phases of flight where you're wanting to be able to get a wider range of performance and efficiency out of the engine. It's really just this part that we're focused on, not the, the complicated you know, takeoff and landing. Like that doesn't change, so don't worry about that. I think remembering that can make this less daunting. What can be kind of daunting is trying to remember, do you move the throttle first or the prop first whenever you're making a power adjustment? Unfortunately, the answer is it depends, but there's a really easy way to remember it. I'll share here in just a minute. And you first need to know that in a constant speed propeller aircraft, we have a new instrument that gets introduced onto the panel here, and it's called the manifold pressure gauge. Now in fixed pitch propellers, the main indication for power is the tachometer, which shows RPM. But with a constant speed propeller, since we have the prop governor that can cap the RPM, Looking at RPM is really not the best indication of how hard we're pushing the engine. So what the heck is a manifold pressure gauge? Sounds confusing, it's pretty simple. It's really just monitoring the air pressure within the intake manifold, which is basically just the pipes that deliver air to the engine in layman's terms. And the measurement for pressure here is in inches of mercury, just like your altimeter. So that's why the manifold pressure gauge is labeled in inches. Now I know that's kind of a weird concept to say power is now measured in inches, uh, which is air pressure. But just think of it, like try to think of it in its simplest terms. You have more air pressure, more air, more power going to the engine. If you have less pressure, less air, less power. Uh, engineers could probably tear that apart, but I'm just trying to explain it at a very high level. So manifold pressure measured in inches, uh, inches of mercury is now your primary indication for how hard you're pushing the engine, not RPM. Because remember, you can adjust RPM now with the prop lever. So that's not, a, that's not the way you're gonna measure true power. Um, manifold pressure is. So while your throttle is adjusting manifold pressure, your prop lever is setting a maximum engine RPM and it's using the prop angle to accomplish this. So assuming you're running enough manifold pressure for the prop to be spinning 2600 RPM in the first place, like we have shown here, if you then pull out that propeller knob or lever, depending on what kind of airplane you're in, that will set a lower max RPM and the propeller will adjust to a more coarse pitch. It takes more bite out of the air with each revolution of the propeller and it slows down as a result. Now on the other hand, if you push that prop knob back in, you're setting a higher max RPM and the propeller will adjust to a finer pitch. It takes less bite out of the air with each revolution of the propeller and it speeds up as a result. So that's generally how RPM is controlled by the prop lever. And it's using the governor to do that. And that's usually where people start. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we'll just immediately dive into the prop governor, but hopefully you can start to see if we zoom out, understanding the, like we gotta understand the why before you can go <laughs> deep dive a diagram of a prop governor. But anyways, it goes back to our original question. If you wanna increase power, do you move throttle first or do you move the prop first? And this is where people get stressed out, myself included, when I was learning. But the easy way to remember it is just try to keep the RPM in hundreds equal to or higher than the manifold pressure in inches. So let's cover a couple examples. It'll make this click. So say you have 23 inches of manifold pressure and 2300 RPM. This is referred to as 23 squared. Basically I have two instances of 23. 23 inches, 2300 RPM. And you want it to go to 24 inches and 2400 RPM, 24 squared. Which one would you move first? 
Well, remember, you want to keep the RPM equal to or higher than the manifold pressure. So you would move the propeller knob or lever to increase the RPM first, followed by the throttle. So you go up on the RPM and then you would go up on manifold pressure. So now you're up at 24 squared and say you wanted to reverse it. You wanted to go down to 23 inches and 2300 RPM. Which one would you move first? Well, remember, you want to keep RPM equal to or higher than the manifold pressure. So you'd reverse the process. You would first decrease throttle down to 23 inches, and then you would decrease RPM to 2300. So you can think of it this way. When you are increasing power, move the prop first, and when you're decreasing power, move the throttle first. Now at first you're gonna have to kind of think about that actively in the cockpit, like which one do I move first? But after a while, it'll become second nature to you. And I think understanding, again, the why here will help you memorize which one you move first. Basically, you're really trying to avoid situations where you are pushing the engine really, really hard through high manifold pressure, but you're only doing low RPMs. So you're wanting to avoid high manifold pressure, low RPM settings. Because this is like trying to pedal uphill on a bicycle while you're in like fifth gear. And to illustrate this, I did it myself. Oh my gosh, my legs are on fire going uphill in fifth gear. And that's what your engine feels. If we back up, you can see I'm pushing super hard, but the pedals are moving so slow at that slow RPM. And I could feel enormous tension in my ankles and my knees. And that's basically what your engine is feeling when you have high manifold pressure with low RPM. You're creating a lot of tension in the engine and you're also creating the risk of fuel detonation in the cylinders. Now, if you mess up the order a little bit here and there in training, it's not like the engine is all of a sudden going to explode. And that's what I was always afraid of. Like, oh, like, anyways, I was always so panicked about that. And that's not what's going to happen. But you do want to be uh, cognizant of this and cautious with it. But really, like, just read your POH. It's going to explain the best engine settings. And they're going to be, it's going to be, you know, what I do in my 182 is not going to work in your, you know, other other plane or whatever. So read the POH. Because especially if you have a turbocharged airplane, like, all of this kind of goes out the window a little bit. Because you're pretty much always going to have higher manifold pressure uh, in inches than you do RPM in hundreds. Because it's turbocharged. Like, it's designed to be that way but you're still gonna have to manage the engine correctly. So just consult your POH as to how to do that. Now to hopefully bring all of this into real life, I want to walk you through an average flight, takeoff, climb, cruise, descent, and landing, and explain what we're gonna do with the different engine settings, at least using my 182 as an example. So in the video on the screen, I will walk you through just that. So I hope you'll click that and I'll see you over there.